What up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. What I want to go over today is the three main categories of direct to seller marketing. Now, what direct to seller marketing is, is it's when we're wholesaling and we go directly out to a seller and ask them if they would be interested in selling their property. Now, there's so many different ways that you can wholesale. You can go directly out to the seller. You can go directly to agents. You can go to other wholesales. Like literally, there's so many different ways. And that's one of the problems that people have with wholesaling is they just don't have any direction. They don't know which one thing to focus on. And then the problem is once you find the strategy to focus on, let's just say in this case, it's direct to seller. There's so many different ways to do direct to seller. And then you're sitting there, you're like, okay, I know I want to go out to homeowners and market to them and have conversations and do all the sales things, right? But I just don't know which strategy to approach in order to get in front of these people. So I'm going to go over the three main categories based off of what you have access to for funds and for time. Let's get into it. Okay, so there are an infinite amount of direct to seller marketing strategies that you can do. But here are some of my favorite. I'm going to break down exactly what each category looks like. Okay, so the first category that we have is a free category. This doesn't really cost you any money. It might cost you some gas money or some skip tracing money or something like that. But my top three favorites out of this is going out and door knocking. This is literally like walking up to somebody's property and saying, dish, 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 dish. would you ever sell your property? And if they don't answer, just to give you guys a little tip, I always bring sticky notes with me and I leave something very vague on the sticky note. I say, please call me with my phone number. And then they call me and they're like, wait, what the, did I do something wrong? Am I in trouble? <laughs> That's just a little tip for door knocking, but you can literally go out in your neighborhood for free and go door knocking. Okay. You can also drive for dollars. Okay. So you can go out and instead of getting out of the car and actually knocking on the door, just take down their address. And then you're going to do this. Then you're going to have to go back and cold call these people. So you're going to have to do something, what we call it, skip tracing, which means you're going to go get their contact information. You're going to get their phone numbers, their email addresses, all that type of stuff. That costs a little bit. It's technically, it's almost free. Actually, you can go at, on free websites like truepeoplesearch.com and get this information for free. So this actually can be free as well. So here's what I recommend. When you are starting out and you don't have much money, I definitely recommend you doing something like this. Because what this is going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to get free reps. And reps is what gets you better at sales. So, because all this stuff, every single strategy, in order to perfect it, in order for you to really perform, you got to be good at sales. And you got to have a sales process and you got to work it. You got to consistently be taking action so that you can get better. It's just like any other sport. If you are playing football, if you're playing tennis, if you're playing hockey, you got to practice. You got to do the thing. You got to get in the game. You got to do all the things to make sure that you're, you're getting better. Same thing here. So, if you're lacking with the funds, then I would do something free. I would not stick here. This is some place that you only want to stay for a short amount of time while you're getting better and or while you're trying to get some money in your pocket so that you can end up doing number two and three. The goal is to get to number two and three. The goal is not to stay here forever. The goal is to go here to get some capital quick and to um, practice and to make sure that you're getting better, right? Because you're not going to get better by just doing nothing, by just not talking to sellers. You need to talk to people. So that's how you get better. Okay. So if you have a decent amount of time, but little to no money, here are the main three that you can go after. Not limited to, by the way, there's a bunch of other strategies. These are just my favorites. Okay. So let's just say you have a thousand to $5,000 to, to work with in order for your, your marketing. Here's what I would recommend. I would recommend getting a virtual assistant to do your cold calling and texting. So you will pull a list or you can even go out driving for dollars and then pay that virtual assistant um, to cold call for you. So this virtual assistant will literally call for you the whole entire day. You pay them a fee every single day. You pay them, you pay them, you pay them, and they generate you leads. And simply your job is to follow up with the leads. As you get better and better and better, you're going to end up bringing that VA up to follow up with your leads and maybe bring on another one. 
and then you're starting to scale that business up. But just to begin, you if you have a thousand to five thousand bucks, this is every all of these are per month, <clears throat> you'll be able to afford a VA. Now, what you need to do is you need to practice. You need to make sure that you're generating leads somewhere to get your practice in. So if you're like holding on to your cash and you're getting nervous and you're like, Mike, I don't want to spend a thousand bucks to five thousand bucks a month on leads because I don't even know sales, which I recommend you don't spend this money if you don't know sales yet. Um, I would recommend getting a coach and practicing over and over and over again. So if you're somewhere between this mark, be okay with not making any money and not seeing that money for like four to six months. Because in the beginning, you're going to generate leads and it's going to be good, but you're going to use like the first two or three months just to get your reps in, just to make sure that you have, um, you know, your reps in to get better. So <clears throat> if you have about, let's just say you hire one VA and you're like, hey, I'm cool with not seeing 10,000 bucks for the next six months. Then you're going to have enough money to skip trace and do all this, all the type of stuff. So just expect if you're going to practice, right? If you're going to get your reps in, if you're going to get better in the beginning with using this strategy, just expect that you're pretty much spending money to practice and you're going to mess up leads and it's okay. In worst case scenario, you mess up a lead, you can always send it to somebody that knows what they're doing. They can close it and you guys JV. Okay. So if you are the type of person where you're like, Mike, I, didn't, I don't want to risk any money like that, then just stay here, stay here, get better. And then once you have gotten the reps, then get into your cold calling. Same thing with direct mail. Direct mail is a little bit more expensive, but it's still in the realm of this thousand to $5,000 mark. Now, I would not recommend doing direct mail if you do not know what you're doing with sales. You're gonna waste a lot of money because this is a little bit more expensive than cold calling is, okay? Now, down here in the 5,000 plus mark, you have one of these two scaled up meaning like you have multiple virtual assistants, meaning that you're spending like 5,000 plus on direct mail and you have multiple salespeople on your team. Um, you could do that. That's what my business looks like. Number two, scaled up. Or you get into something like PPC or TV ads or radio ads, SEO, all that type of stuff. This stuff is very expensive. You want to get to this point. This is a goal. The goal is to scale up Scale up your virtual assistant, scale up your direct mail, maybe get into PPC or radio ads or something. Be consistent with, with one you pursue. But the goal is to get better, is to use number one to get better or use number two. If you're a risky risk taker and you're like, hey, I don't mind spending 10,000 bucks and not seeing it back. Okay. Do that and then scale up to number three. Once you are at, are at number three and you're doing it on a consistent basis, then that's when you know you have a good business operating.